channel. For those of you who don't know me or who've never been here before, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name's Rachel. I'm the owner of the Eclectic Cottage here in Spokane, Washington. Happy Tuesday. I hope you had a great weekend. I know mine was very full. Uh, my husband and I did manage to get out on Sunday though and do a junk run. So I do have a thrift haul for you on Friday. And uh, today being Tuesday, I have a flip for you. And today's flip is a furniture flip. It's a buffet that I've had stuck in our garage uh, for about a year. <laughs> and so I decided it was finally time to get it out and get it done. And so that is what I've been working on for the past few days. I actually came in yesterday on my day off to get some more done on it finished it up this morning and I'm really happy with how it came out. So I hope you like it. Uh, and if you do like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then hit the little notification bell and that will let you know when I upload new content. I'm currently trying to stick to Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesday, normally some kind of a flip or a DIY, trash to treasure, that kind of thing. And then Friday is normally gonna be my junk run. Uh, uh, and then also just keep in mind that all of the DIY products that I used on the buffet today uh, can be purchased on my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. Anyway, I really hope you like the video and please let me know at the end what you think of the raised stencil and if it's something that you ever foresee yourself doing uh, on a piece of furniture. Anyway, here's that buffet. So here is the cute little buffet that I pulled out of our garage. And the first thing I'm doing here is taking off all of the hardware. And one thing I have learned is to always put your screws back into your hardware pieces and set the whole things aside together. That way you're not having to look for screws that fit in things later on down the road. Then I took the little piece of backer board off. It was held on by two pieces of wood and a couple screws on each side. Pretty easy to remove. Once that was done, I hauled her outside for some sanding. I really wanted to uh, get that top down to the bare wood and just let that wood shine through. So I started with 80 grit sandpaper, got most of it off, and then I did switch over to 150 followed by 120. Once it was all done, I cleaned it up with some uh, just clean water and a paper towel and brought it back inside. From there, it's time to give it a bath. So I grabbed my crud cutter, sprayed everything down really well, and then cleaned it really well inside, outside, all the legs, took the ugly uh, pieces of paper out of it, and then followed that up with some clean water just to make sure I don't have any residues uh, left behind from the crud cutter. Once everything's clean and dry, it's time to start on my grand experiment. I had decided I wanted to put a raised stencil on the front of this piece because it is a little bit plain uh, along the front of it. So I am using Diamond Flourish by Redesign by Prima and their stencil fiber paste. And I lined my drawers up, got them where I needed them, put my stencil down and taped it where I wanted it and then began applying the stencil fiber paste. It's a little bit like frosting a cake. You just take some on your spatula, you push it down into the stencil, and once you're done, you scrape off any excess. Then it was time to remove my tape and see how my stencil turned out. This time, thankfully, it was perfect. The first time, it did not turn out so great. I'll have to explain that to you at the end of the video. Unfortunately, the stencil was just a little too short for the drawers, so I had to lay it back down once the fiber paste was dry and just add a little bit of the stencil to each side of the drawer. Once that was done, I had to figure out how to get the doors done. So I took the stencil, laid it down on the drawer, and then lined up the door about where it would be, held the stencil, and then set it down very carefully not so as not to move the stencil around. Once I had it in place, I held it down with one hand and just applied the stencil fiber paste all over the door. Same technique as before, just pushing it down into the nooks and crannies and scraping back the excess. Turned out perfect. 
Once the fiber paste was dry, I took some sandpaper, went around all the edges, knocked off all the little uh, ridges, and then sanded it smooth so that everything was ready for paint. And here it is, all done, sanded, ready to be finished. Next, I decided to go ahead and put the stain on the top of it just to keep it protected in case I did get any paint or anything on it. So I'm using Minwax's Kona. I obviously have got some gloves on to keep it off of my skin because it's pretty hard to get off and just giving it a really good coat of Kona and uh, wiping that back with a paper towel. Once that's done, the last preparation thing that I needed to do was to tape off around the drawers and the doors just to make sure that when I painted, I didn't paint too far inside of the cavity of the, the buffet. Then finally, it was time to paint. And I did end up going over this with three good coats of paint. There's the second coat. And for the third coat, I flipped it upside down just so that I could see the bottom and make sure I hadn't missed anything. Once the paint was dry, it was time to remove the tape and clean up anywhere that I had accidentally gotten paint that it wasn't supposed to be. And I just did this with a damp shop towel. DIY paint's really easy to clean off before it's been sealed. Then I went ahead and sealed up the top. Um, I'm using General Finishes flat top coat, giving it a nice even coat. And I did this three more times, letting it dry really completely between each coat. Then I went on to distressing. <clears throat> And I started with wet distressing, but I did grab my 220 grit sandpaper and go over it in some areas. I really just wanted that dark wood to shine through and it matches the top so beautifully that I really wanted you to be able to see it. Next was waxing. So here I am <clears throat> putting on my clear wax. I plan on dark waxing this and the one thing I have learned is if you're going to use dark or black wax, it really behooves you to start with a coat of clear wax. It just makes it much easier to move the dark wax around and it makes it a little less dirty looking, I guess, when you're done. So once the clear wax is on and I've wiped it back, I start with the dark wax. Unfortunately, I completely forgot to record uh, me doing the front of this piece, but you'll see it here in a second. The process with the dark wax is the same as the clear. Just brush it on and then wipe it back with a shop towel, uh, just kind of feathering off the excess. I went over the stencils a few times just to make sure that I got plenty of dark wax in the stencil. And then I took a little bit of mineral spirits and just went around the stencils and kind of cleaned off a little bit of the dark wax just so that the raised stencil was really what you saw on the front of this piece. The last step, I took some of DIY's gold gilding wax and a little chip brush and just dry brushed some gold gilding wax across the fronts of the raised stencils. <clears throat> Once that was done, I used the same gilding wax to shine up the hardware. And then after several hours of work and uh, some really achy knees, this piece is finally finished.
of how the little buffet came out. Uh, it's definitely a little bit of a departure from anything that I've tried before, but I think I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Uh, definitely kind of that high-end farmhouse-y kind of look. I really think it would fit into a lot of different decor styles, which is nice. And uh, I really do like that stencil fiber paste and having that raised texture on the front of the piece. I think it just gave it a lot of um, elegant personality that it didn't have before. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts though. Did you love it? Did you hate it? So let me know in the comments below. Uh, and I promise you, I tell you uh, what happened the first time I tried the stencil on the drawers. Um, what I can tell you is if your stencil fiber paste is cold and it gets really thick, you might want to take some out, put it in a bowl or something and mix it, spritz it with a little bit of water and just thin it up a little bit. Um, it should have the consistency of kind of frosting, not mud. And I didn't know that when I first started. And so uh, the first time I used the very thick stencil fiber paste and put that down. And when I peeled my stencil back, it peeled all of the fiber paste with it, except for a few little pieces. So I had to take my scraper and scrape it all back off again, clean it up and start over. And the second time I had spritzed my uh, fiber paste with a little bit of water, mix it up really well and got it thinned out just a little so that it would spread a little easier uh, the second go around. And that worked like a dream. So just my tip, something I learned <laughs> in the process of doing this buffet. Anyway, um, have a great week and uh, like I said earlier I will have a thrift haul for you a junk run on Friday and uh, again if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing and I will see you back here on Friday thanks so much for being here Bye. <music>